AVB is an umbrella of IEEE standards. There's a bunch of them. Presentation time, traffic shaping, stream reservation, various formats for data transmission, and an AVB configuration <coughs> protocol. Now, all of these have fancy IEEE names and numbers. The key elements of each one of these we're going to touch on. Precision time protocol. This allows us to achieve never before achievable accuracy of timing. Before AVB, without AVB bridges, without AVB endpoints, you cannot get the level of accuracy that precision time protocol provides. And once you've got that level of accuracy and all of your devices on the network that are synchronized, you can do distributed systems. We've done distributed systems before, but with this level of accuracy, it's really, really straightforward and it opens up a lot of doors. Separate audio and video, video streams that are precisely synced over the network, sending channels from all types of different sources through all types of different number of hops and you don't need to know what the, what the network looks like and it'll hit your mixer and it's all synchronized. So there's no need to consider the topology of the network. The network deals with that. The underlying thing here with AVB is there's a lot of smarts going on here. Thank you IEEE for all you spec writers. They put it in the box. And now we can have multiple media clocks. And what does that mean? So we can have multiple sample rates. We can have multiple clock domains. We can have different audio and video syncs. All of these on a single network. All of these on a single wire. Very powerful. So let's talk about that first one, traffic shaping. How many people here have driven in California? Okay. So when you go to get on the on-ramp, right, you see these. <laughs> and what does that do? That paces when traffic gets onto the network. Okay? You've experienced firsthand traffic shaping. Because what's that there to do? That's there to limit and control how data, your car and you, gets onto that network. What does that allow? That allows the state of California not to have to put in 10 lane roads or for you to have the flip side of it, which they wouldn't put in 10 lane roads, they can't afford it. So they'd be, you'd be standing, spending an even more time in traffic. So that's where the California highway thing breaks down. Traffic shaping, it doesn't solve all of its problems. Once you don't need to over provision your network because you don't have these giant peaks of data hitting you, it's smoothed out. Once you can do that, you know what that means? That means you've reduced your network needs. You need fewer switches. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> Bill's from Extreme. He'll talk to you in a minute. Um, you'll have to pull even less wires. So traffic shaping makes this huge difference. Also, because this happens on every single bridge throughout the system, you can build bigger networks. You can build bigger networks without being concerned about this because at each hop, without AVB, you had to be really careful of how you over provisioned your network and what was upstream getting funneled down into each one of those wires to hit some port on your switch. Stream reservation protocol. All right. How many people flew to Las Vegas? How many people walked to Las Vegas? Jim. All right, I just want to see if everybody was just now just raise their hand, whatever the hell Lee said, sure. Great. All right, so of you people who flew here, how many of you have premier status with your airline? Come on, raise your hands. Okay. Now, I didn't just say that to make, you, to make us economy flyers jealous, of which we are. But, so, uh, put your hands up again, premier guys. I'm not picking on you guys in the back row. Uh, gentleman there in the blue shirt there. <laughs> What's your name? Jim. Hi, Jim. Um, hmm? Jim. Jim, not Jim. Oh, sorry. Do, so you're one of those upgrade guys, right? You're the guy who's at the counter. Give me the upgrade. 
Do you always get it? Always never. Excellent. Yes, there's justice in the world. <laughs> uh, sorry, it's just my economy class uh, roots showing through the jealousy. Um, there's only one way to make sure that you get that cool reclining seat, that you get the free drinks, that you get the good meal. Heck, you get any meal, right? That's to have a first class ticket. Have it in your hand. Don't wait for the priority. Don't wait for the upgrade. You need a reservation. And that's because there's a big difference between a priority and a reservation. So, Stream Reservation Protocol, SRP, you can think of it, it's your network travel agent. So she's working for you to make sure that your media has a first class ticket, to make sure that it's gonna get on that plane, that it's gonna get the, on that network. It's gonna get through every single time, regardless of whoever else is there saying, look, I've got high priority, I've got status. Sorry, dude, I've got a ticket. It also is the traffic cop. So it's sitting there watching all the traffic. It's letting your AVB prioritize traffic go. And it's telling that other legacy traffic, sorry, you're gonna have to wait. When there's time, when the street's clear, go right ahead. It's actively, actively policing your network against road traffic. This is really critical, right? So how many times have you had a call some nightmare call because the system was working great, all of a sudden something went wrong. You get there and after a bunch of calls, you probably call your equipment manufacturers, you call everybody else and you look and you look and you look and you find that one guy who plugs something into the network. Oh, I was just trying to, you know, do a firmware update on my iPad or something. ABB will see that and say, that's legacy traffic. That's fine, you can do that, but you're not gonna influence the priority, the reservations I have for my data. This is really important. All right, and this all happens automatically. So unlike QoS, again, which is just a strong recommendation that you have to go in and turn the knobs and dials to set it up like this, this is happening automatically. These are active participants. I've got an endpoint, I've got a talker and listener, and they want to start communicating. They go and they talk to all of the bridges involved and they lock down and guarantee that bandwidth automatically. It's like having an IT guy in the box. This poor guy's never even going to get out of that box. <coughs> so, AVB configuration protocol. What this allows is multi-manufacturer device discovery. A common standardized way for every manufacturer to be able to find every other manufacturer's device. It also provides for friendly names to patch media among all of those different devices. And it provides critical status and error information for ease of troubleshooting. There could be a problem in an AVB system. Not typically, but th you have information into this. One of the critical places is when you commission the system, right? You put it in and you fire it up. Somewhere, somebody made a mistake on how much data they thought had to be provisioned in this particular area, right? And now you need to try to figure out where it happens. Through AVB configuration protocols, you can determine, you can query those switches and it'll tell you, hey, I'm right here, I'm on port seven and I don't have enough bandwidth. I've been telling people no. Wow, that's powerful. So, I've been doing AVB since about 2007 now and um, I kind of feel like I've got to set the record straight on a couple things. I've had people talk to me about certain things and it just irks me, so. I, I get grumpy about things. And one of these is a misunderstanding of a fundamental, fundamentally really important feature of AVB, which is called presentation time. What presentation time does is it allows you to get audio from a talker to a listener through a switch. Okay, 
But what it really does is it allows you to get from that same talker through a huge number of switches to a different listener. And both of these listeners, both of these guys, receive that audio and play it back at exactly the same time. So in this case, I've got my Cal loudspeaker set up. I don't know what's behind. I don't know how my network is configured. You probably do. But in the event that you didn't, you don't need to know. Because when you, all you need to know is what's coming out of these two speakers is going to be precisely aligned. So presentation time takes that into account. It's got a default setting of two milliseconds. And that's to take care of some of these transport delays through, through switches. But that's really overkill. It was designed by a bunch of IEEE guys sitting around saying, hmm, okay, let's pick some numbers that somebody can test to. That doesn't mean that's the maximum. It just means that we need to quantify it so we could test it. Let's pick hmm, two milliseconds. Okay. Two milliseconds over seven hops at 100 megabits. Okay, great. So if you're a gigabit, you can go through a lot more hops and not hit two milliseconds. Questions at the end? Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. I guess I owe you something for that one uh, crowd response. So, um, so presentation time, it's there for as a fundamental benefit. So you don't need to n n worry about that networking. Um, the networking topology. And I, the other thing I hear, Lee, when are these standards ever going to be done? Here's the deal. Presentation time, ratified standard. Shaping, ratified standard. Stream reservation protocol, guesses, ratified standard. The data formats, a ratified standard. These are all IEEE standards that have now been lumped into mainstream Ethernet. They're all part of, mostly part of the Q-spec. There is one, the AVB configuration protocol, officially 1722.1, which is just about to go into the ratification uh, process. So we're anticipating August for that. So we're almost there on that. 80% in the bag and line of sight for the last one. So let's talk about some max numbers. AVB to the max. That sounds like a Red Bull commercial. All right, so let's check some channel capacities. Let's use audio, 24-bit 48K, 100 megabit. Kind of old school, but it's still out there. You can get 12 single channel streams down one of those cables. Nine AES streams, or a stereo PCM stream. If you want to see how much you can get down the wire, you can put 45 channels into a single stream. Part of what I'm trying to show here is that you've got a lot of flexibility. You can change between, do I need uh, fine granularity and I'm willing to trade off some bandwidth, or do I just need to get as much as I can down the pipe? And it may depend, right? If I've got a microphone, I don't need, I don't need a whole lot of data. I can get a single stream. Great. More typically, you're going to see an AVB network that is on one gig. One gig is so prevalent now that it's basically the de facto standard. And on that, now we can get 122 single channel streams, 97 AES or stereo streams. You can get 60 channel streams onto that, seven of them, 420 channels. Oh, and by the way, this is bi-directional. I can get 420 by 420. So if I'm trying to connect together something like a bunch of DSP boxes and I want to just use them to bridge a bunch of processing together, fine, I'll put that into a 60-channel stream. Again, if I want to do a huge live show, I got a bunch of mics, 122 single-channel streams. Okay, Lee, that's not enough for me. Okay, fine, it's Ethernet, 10 gig. How about... 1,220 single channel streams. Yeah, that's getting pretty good. Not bad. 976 stereo streams, 77 60 channel streams. That's a lot, a lot of data. But again, it's based on Ethernet and it gets to scale. 
So uh, some quick rules of thumb here if you're trying to calculate. Some head math. A single channel stream takes about six megabits per stream. So if I've got a single channel and a single stream, it's a little inefficient. It takes about six megabits per stream. So let's go through a calculation. I've got gigabit ethernet. That's 1,000 megabits. I multiply that by 75.75. AVB, stream reservation protocol by default, allocates 75% of its bandwidth for AVB. So that means I've got 750 megabytes by default to be used for my AV media networking. Okay, times six megabytes, well, that rule of thumb says 125, 122, close enough. If I want to do AES, eight megabits per stream, same kind of math, I end up with 94 streams. That rule of thumb's a little on the light side, 97. So, I want to tell you a story. It's a dark and stormy night. Use your imaginations now. I know it's still kind of early and you'll probably be foggy from last night. So imagine that storm. It's the worst storm you can think of. If you're from the Northeast like me, it's probably snowing. But you're inside, you're hanging out. It's the weekend. Of course it's the weekend. You're hanging out with your friends, your family, enjoying some good food, some good drink. And then what happens? Did somebody say the power went out? <laughs> Somebody's from the Northeast, obviously. Snowstorm, right? Your phone rings. You look at the caller ID and your heart stops. It's your biggest client. And he is screaming because his system just went down on their biggest event and you better get down there right now. You're standing there with your phone held away from your ear. Everybody around you see what's, what's going on. You see the blood rush out of your face. You put your phone in your pocket, you excuse yourself, you sprint out the door, you jump in your car, you drive down the road trying to see through the weather, frantically dialing your team, this damn phone. I hope I can get a hold of them. We need to get in there and fix this now. Our butts are on the line. It's gonna be a long night. A little bit of pain, huh? Epilogue to that story, you know what happened? You get there and it turns out that some exec was trying to download some YouTube videos that they were gonna play simultaneously and plugged into your jack and crashed and didn't have the right prioritization and it was messing with your system. Who looks bad, the exec? No, you did. So let's try the other story. This upgrade was amazing and it went in super fast, right? That said, your best long-term repeat customer, who over the years has become a very trusted friend as well. So his AVB infrastructure has been working flawlessly. None of those dark and stormy night calls from him. So when he needed to upgrade that system, because as everybody, we're all hoping upgrade business, it's a big part of what we do. Expandability, AVB facilitates that. When he needs to upgrade, who did he call? He called you because you had the relationship with him and he had a really good experience with this. So he didn't care what was under the hood. He doesn't care about AVB, but both you and he care that that system was easier to maintain his existing system, and it was easier to install and upgrade. And it didn't take weeks and weeks to configure just because you added some more equipment to it. A very, very big deal. So, the sun is shining. Shining through your face in the windshield as you're driving down the road and the warm, the warm air is hitting your arm that's hanging out the window. You know where you're headed to? The bank. To cash a check. because AVB makes it easier for you. Now, I know I'm talking in hyperbole here, but I'm proving a point. The key thing is AVB, we fixed the network, right? We didn't work around it, we fixed it. And it is your ally because it's actively the, they're policing and protecting you from some end user doing something silly from some problem due to an under-provisioned system, it's there for you. And with that, I hand it to Bill Murphy from Extreme Networks. Come on up here, Bill. <laughs>